Forest Biomass Retention and Harvesting Guidelines for Conservation and Environmental Protection Our country has a long history of public involvement in the protection and management of our nation's forests. Forests are the backdrop for many of our rural communities. Forests provide timber, paper, plants, and recreation. We value forests for the way of life and economic opportunities they provide us all. For many, forests also hold great spiritual meaning and emotional connections that should not be underestimated. For all these reasons, people have raised concerns about using wood from forests, also called biomass, to produce energy. Some citizens are worried about the impact increased harvest could have on our forests. They deserve to know that as we meet the challenges of a changing climate and over-dependence on foreign energy, we are not sacrificing the health and productivity of our forest land. One public concern is that new policies that encourage the use of forest biomass for energy will spur an overdevelopment in biomass power plants and lead to overharvesting. A solution to this challenge is guidelines for forest biomass harvest and retention that detail how forest biomass can be removed for energy while at the same time protecting habitat, soils, water, and the future of the forest. It is important to note that while biomass guidelines can address what happens within a particular harvest, they cannot address overall harvest levels and overall sustainability. These broader issues of sustainability are best addressed by forest certification programs, and biomass harvesting guidelines can be one element of forest certification. Guidelines can keep us on the path to sustainability by addressing the primary ecological effects of biomass harvesting. As biomass harvests increase, more tops, limbs, small twigs, and branches may be removed, and there may be fewer dead and dying trees in the forest. Dead wood from large logs to small twigs and leaves play important ecological roles within healthy forests. So the question is, how much of this material can be removed before we begin to see negative effects on soil nutrient levels, or habitat for wildlife, or biodiversity within the forest? Biomass retention and harvesting guidelines were designed and developed to answer this question. Any effective set of guidelines must address the ecological concerns in a way that is cost-effective and operationally practical for loggers and foresters working in the woods. The Forest Guild guidelines integrate the best available science for specific forest types with practical knowledge and the experience of foresters working in these types of forests. The guidelines need to offer specific measurable targets that can provide assurances that the ecological values of forests are protected, while providing enough flexibility to account for the varying conditions of different management objectives. Biomass harvesting guidelines can be useful for enhancing state-level best management practices, which now exist to protect water quality in all 50 states. When the existing state best management practices were developed, they focused on water quality and did not consider the increased removal of low-quality material that new biomass markets and policies are encouraging. Although some states, such as Maryland, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, have moved forward to enhance their guidelines for biomass, most states have not, and even some of the enhanced guidelines do not provide measurable targets. The Forest Guild's Biomass Harvesting Guidelines provide tools to augment state best management practices and address increased biomass removals. When properly implemented, these guidelines should provide the assurance all of us need that the ecological values of the forest are being protected while forest biomass adds to our nation's sources of renewable energy.